All right, guys, so I'm at Ray's house. We're about to do like a quick little interview thing that you may have seen with his father this week that I actually hit the like button on, which was pretty awesome. I really enjoyed it, and it was nice to see him do that with him. But I got to poop. I got to pee. I got to do all that stuff. But I didn't bring my light. I didn't bring anything else, and he's going to come through that door any second now. Let's see where it is. I found it. Yes, he found his light, so that'll help a lot. It's devoid of batteries, but I think I can find enough batteries real quick to put it in the back of this motherfucker. Let's, tr let's try that again. I drink a beer. This is what I do when it, during an interview. I'm very nervous. I'm nervous. All right, we just switched cameras. I switched to mine. I'm trying to get Ray to buy this camera, but you know, our money is very tight these days. So hopefully the audio and content is not that much different, but we're using 60 frames a second. Is that gonna be okay for you? Uh, maybe, oh yeah, it's gonna be fine. The only difference is, is gonna be the fact that I have a, a lens, a non-stock lens. I have an adjustable lens with a focus ring. Also, I don't even know what you're just saying. Speaking to the mic, I can't hear you over there. Aliens. Space, cuz. Take a fucking hundred to aliens. <laughs> um. <coughs> Where's my whiskey? God damn it, there. I fucking siphoned some the of your beer, man. We, what were we talking? Why are you letting the camera? We're talking about aliens. See, I don't like how the camera's cut off. That. I, yeah, well, we're not gonna anymore because now we're using TJ's camera, which it runs for long, extended it, periods of time. So, I, I suggested did, I, that, I did suggest that from the beginning, but that was back before we started recording. Uh, back at your house, I was like, if we, if we film this tonight, we should put your camera on the tripod. Is it on record? And we can vlog with mine. Yeah, it's on record. He's going to record. Yeah. No, so, we're going to talk about aliens. I think, uh, oh, I remember exactly what we were talking about. I was saying I believe there are species on this planet we don't even know about yet, whether they're so microscopic oh, well, okay, or whether right. they live under the ocean. We don't even understand our planet fully. Or How we, can we understand the universe we'll see, that exists around us? I like what he just said, okay? I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna like jump in and say like I have artificial proof or like anything, but I don't know, the more you like think about things, and for example, like people are gonna go like Christopher Columbus came, <laughs> Christopher Columbus came here and discovered America, <clears throat> and the more we like study history, it's like we have all these archaeologists and they keep coming out there and it's like, no, he wasn't here, Europeans and like the Vikings, they were here way before that. So, like, don't even follow that stuff. Don't follow what history tells you. And I remember having this debate in, like, middle school with my uh, history teacher. And, no, take it from me, from a guy that never finished high school, okay? I, and I wish I did. It's mutual, but, buddy. It's mutual. Yeah. So, like, and it sucks that I didn't do it. And I thought I knew all. But at the same time, <coughs> I look back and, like, I did kind of know. Not know all, but it's like I kind of have a basic knowledge. And we got an argument about how... We got in this thing about Christopher Columbus and how the Earth was flat, and I was like, "Yes, the Earth is not flat." But like, what is the difference between us thinking the Earth is flat and looking at like six hundred years from or fourteen ninety two is when he Christopher Columbus discovered the ocean blue, and then we look at, at the time six hundred years later, not even six hundred years later, and we're gonna think we know all? No, we don't know shit. And that's what I got into it with him, and he like argued me for like an hour, and I remember I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom. He was like a human supremacist. He thought we're fucking, we have the supreme knowledge, and we gotta figure it out. Well, he did not like my opinions at all, but I think it was because I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> we understand, you gotta go to the bathroom right now? I think he thought, no, no, uh, I think he thought I was smoking in the bathroom all the time, and at this time, I didn't smoke. Now you're getting into some shit. I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, or like anything, and then the best part was my, um, we would have like detention, but it was like after school. It wasn't no more in school detention or like that. It was like after school was over. You had to stay after school. And my science teacher, he was I was like his favorite. Like me and him got along so great. That, we that's not uncommon. And we called him drunk so and so. He was a big drunk, and I would <laughs> run into him when my aunt would bring me out to the bar we go to, and I would actually he'd be like, "What are you doing out here?" And I'd be like, "My aunt's picking me up." And my aunt's bringing me here, we're getting her son or my cousin, whatever, I don't know, something stupid shit. But we would talk about scientific stuff, and like, I love it, like, I love science. Science is like my biggest 
favoriteest thing in the fucking world. And we would get into debates, and he's like, why are you in, in detention? I was like, oh, because I gave my history teacher a big old debate about how, like, Christopher Columbus was like, it, what is us to say that, like, this is, like, a factual thing? It's like, we don't know shit 600, 700 years ago. Were you there? Did you have a video camera? Like, and this is before social media. Like, you guys, today, you grew up in social media era. Like, we didn't have any of that. So, like, imagine, like, two, in the year 1998 or 99, and me arguing with my teacher and him just sending me to office. And, like, I think it honestly had to do with the fact that I went to the office. I had to go to the bathroom, and I didn't just, I had no authority over anything. And at the time, my parents were going through shit, and I would literally just say, fuck it, I'm going to the bathroom whether you'd like me to go or not. So it had nothing to do with what we were debating on, but it was just like, look, you can't go to the bathroom if I don't tell you to. It was like, the fuck I can't. If I gotta go to the bathroom, I'm going to the fucking bathroom. And I did. And next thing I know, I went to the <coughs> office. And then the following year, this happened again. And then I dropped out of high school because he did the same thing to me. And he was like, still giving me the same hard time. And I was like, fuck you, dude. I'm like, I'm sitting here, I'm waking up like at four o'clock in the morning delivering newspapers in town and listening at my parents arguing until 6 o'clock in the morning before, like, sometimes I would go out. That's something we can't all identify with. And it, it was, like, something, like, I didn't want to deal with, but I did. And it was my own fault for staying there. My sister bailed, and I still sat there. And I started to just pick up the camera record because my friend Greg that I talked about, which was cool that he actually told me about that. And shout out to you, Greg. You got some yeah, love tonight seriously, though, from man. TJ. And he's one of the most talented musicians you'll ever meet good friends, and I wish I would have saw you at uh, Stolz and Justice engagement party. I was kind of bummed you weren't there. I know you'll probably never see this, but, you know, this is me doing my own thing. There's a good chance you like that one day. You will. Um, I have a good story. A friend I went to high school with, I met up with him recently, but back when we were in high school, a teacher denied him his privilege to use the restroom. And this guy is just like, um, I know him today. He was successful in high school. He was good at school. He was in a band that was making a lot of money. He wasn't even eight, he wasn't even 18 years old yet. He was in this band that made a lot of money. And ever since high school, he's been involved in good jobs and gotten good career. He's in a real good career right now. Makes money. Has his own place. It's like designed and looks beautiful, at least from the way I hear him describe it. But back in high school, a teacher wouldn't let him use the restroom, so he intentionally just pissed in his fucking pants right in the middle of class. And that's a true story. Yo, so Kyle M, Kyle M, Kyle M, Kyle M. yo, yeah. dude, I, it, in your pants. If Kyle. I wasn't in his place right now, I would stand up and piss myself right now just for yeah. you, because that is that is, yo, <laughs> seriously, that is fucking it's a good awesome, story. man. That is really cool, man. Yeah, but fuck you, Kyle. You've always been successful. You've always been a successful, good-looking guy. <laughs> just killed it ever since the day you were fucking born. You cunt. Was he only successful because he's good-looking? Mm -hmm. No, I, I might be better looking than him if I took better care of myself. If I would just fucking cut my hair and shave a little bit sometimes. Well, dude, I shave my balls and my fucking <laughs> ass. It? Oh man, I haven't shaved my pubes. They say like crabs are going uh, extinct because porn, pornography set a trend into effect of shaving your pubic regions. But I don't see that as a trend. I haven't shaved my shit and, and I've been fucking too. I've been just like ramming this jungle of hair against somebody else's fucking privates. How fat was she, Ray? <laughs> We're not going to get into that. Uh, I've already gone too far. No, I haven't. Why do you want to talk about fat, fat bitches you fuck? Uh, I don't Are know. Are they because they're aliens? <laughs> Are they aliens? Uh, how, how'd I even, uh, how'd I, how'd I fall down that rabbit hole? Yeah, we're just talking about aliens. Fun. Yeah. So aliens. The only reason why I agreed to do this video is because I want to talk about aliens. Yeah, fuck you. Fuck whatever you think about aliens. I want to say that first of all, humanity is a piece of shit. And what they talked about the gorilla video earlier, now first of all, that gorilla, I oh, let's, don't you interrupt me, bro. No, let's go back. Let's stick to aliens, bro. <laughs> Fuck that gorilla. All right, let's go to aliens. Well, that's what I'm getting into. All right, all right, all right. But I want to say is like, first of all, fuck that shit. Humanity, for example, the zoo. Me and my girl, we went to the zoo. If you look at my, my blog channel, we went to the zoo. And all I could think about was like, I don't like going to the zoo. And I don't. Like, if you actually watch my videos, like, I love my mom to death. Like, I know she went a little overboard by filling her house with bunny rabbits, but her heart meant well. She wanted to take care of these animals, and it just went overboard. But now I find myself, I sit at my little shitty-ass Walmart pool outside, and there's this family of bunny rabbits that lives under our shed. And I watch them every day, and I look forward to it, and it's like the coolest thing ever. And I watch this little family. 
When we first moved out here last year, when we talked about the tornado, like this little family was under there with like little babies, and it was like the coolest thing. And I said words my mom would say. I was like, oh, little bunny foo-foos. I was like, oh, little bunny foo-foos. And this little baby bunny that comes out there, and I had the, like, the, the little wire hooked up to our filter, and it couldn't figure out how to hop over it. So it was like this, and it kept hitting it. It was like trying to go what under filter? To, just to my pool filter out oh, back. The oh, this is a really decent story. Yeah, telling. just having oh this. Oh my God. And I wasn't yeah. vlogging anything. But I his, like, his pool is not, his pool, him having a pool in the backyard is very recent. I'm sorry, continue. It's okay. And I, it was so adorable. And I was like trying to go over it. And like, and I talk about it all the time. And me and my son and my aunt was there the other week. And the little baby was like up against like our little sunroom. And God bless Joe that lived there before because he put the sunroom at the, our little our house that we live in and we turn it into our baby room. And this little baby bunny was like hollering by and it was so cute. And I was like, oh, baby bunnies. And But the year before we went through the same thing, but there was only like two of them. Now there's like six or seven. And everywhere I go out here, there's baby bunnies everywhere. So like not saying I want to hoard bunny rabbits. They're on my property. They're everywhere. You're, they're your, everywhere. Your property like just is a safe haven for rabbits. So the first year you saw two and now you see six. And until a natural predator comes down and starts fucking them up, Something might catch on, dude. But I can't oh. interfere in that. That's like, that's mother nature at its best. Like, yeah. it, it's such a beautiful thing to see these little baby bunnies. Like, I was in there tonight, like, organizing my shed. I was putting, like, all, the, like, the pool equipment in there on my son's raft. And I heard the little bunny on there was, like, making this noise. And they make this noise only because I know this because I grew up with 130 fucking rabbits in my fucking house growing up. And they make this noise and they go... <laughs> I know, it's, like, weird to say, but, like, it made that noise. And I was like... Oh, it's like in the shed, and I was like, I wish somebody's ever died. Like, was well, like so nostalgic? Yes, it's like nostalgic. It's like a surreal thing. It's like I don't know what's going on, and, like, <laughs> and I, I'm the kind of person like I can't even kill an insect. And my girl, she didn't grow up in that. She's an only child. She didn't grow up obviously with rabbits in her house. And like I can't kill spiders. I can't kill anything. And it bothers me. The one night she like smashed the spider. I was like, no. <laughs> I, like, I kill no. insects. I kill insects decisively. Uh, if I know enough to know you're an insect that's going to benefit me by being around my house, bro, do your thing. Just don't get too far into my area. If you stay in the corners, I'm not going to fuck with you. Yes, and that's what But if I see a mosquito, like, I feel bad today. I did kill two mosquito hawks, and when I killed them, I was... I acknowledge the fact that these guys are actually beneficial. They're not going to bite me. They can't suck my blood. They actually just look like big ass mosquitoes and they feed off of mosquitoes. But they were like on you were like kind of close. They to you. weren't even. They were just in the same room as me. And I was like, guy, I know that I need you, but you're freaking me out. You look fucking freaky, dude. But that's like a normal thing though. Like, cross Joe. Well, that's like her mother nature though. Like today, my five year old today, she told me we, there was a mosquito hawk in our room and I didn't kill that one. But she's so smart because she was like, uh, she said, I guess her grandma. On her mom's side, yeah, yeah. She said, yeah, yeah. Told me yeah. the big ones are good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never had a yeah, yeah. But my daughter has a yeah, yeah. She said the big ones are good. The little ones are bad. The big ones can't hurt you. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I don't know what they're called. We call them mosquito hawks. Do you know what I'm talking about? They're like. Um, it looks like a mosquito, but it's a lot bigger. And they got. I know what you're You know they eat the mosquitoes. Yes, but they're not called mosquito hawks. Yeah. So I don't know. What That's just what I learned to call them since I was young. Well, yeah, the ones it, I find, it's like finding like Daddy Long Legs. Yeah, like Daddy, Daddy Long Legs of mosquitoes, yeah. yeah. If you know, if you're watching this video and you know, leave a comment. What are those called? The mosquito hawks. The, they look like mosquitoes, but they're big as fuck. We should describe it. They're, but yeah, they have My them. useless dick. <laughs> I want to hop back to bunnies for a second, too. Uh, your mom hoarded rabbits. I grew up with a rabbit in this house. The cage actually used to be right there next to the step. It was called a French Angora. You know, so like kind of like wherever the camera is, it's like wherever it's like right to the side of the camera, right next to where the guitar is, where the white blanket is. We had a big cage on the floor, and um, do you know what a French Angora rabbit looks like? Yes. Like we used my mom. It was called Bunny. It was called Fluff and Under. He's like big. Oh, you had a French Angora. We had a. It was a white Angora. Fat and as fluffy. fuck. And my Wait. dad, it was the only rabbit he liked. It was called fucking <laughs> Fluff and Under. I watched mine die. <laughs> When I came home from school, I had a form of cancer. Uh, it's probably some kind of respiratory cancer or something. But I came home from school one day. Both of my parents were at work, and I guess my younger sister was still at school. And I watched her sit in a cage and like convulse and choke. It was like, <laughs> and I remember like I guess I had a cell phone at the time, so I called my mom, and I was like, "Fucking Noel's dying." That's, that was a rabbit's name, Noel. And she's like, "I don't know what to tell you." And I sat here and I watched the thing die. I might have pet it. I might not have. That'd be a dramatic. That'd be a dramatic addition if I could tell you for a fact I sat I there and had it while I died. It. But 
No, like that, that, no seriously, <laughs> it's funny you say that because my, my dad, we had a, my mom, the one, actually, when my mom and my dad split up, they, my mom took all the rabbits to my mom, my grandmother said, here you go, here, stroke my fucking flask. But <laughs> my mom, when she left, like she took all the rabbits to uh, her mother's house, my uh, grandmother, down, great-grandmother down there's house, and uh, the one rabbit that actually survived, if you guys look back at my old videos, it was called Fluff or Another. And my dad was the one rabbit they actually liked, and he would walk down the stairs, and he was like petting and feeding. Is that like, the Angora? Yeah, it was a little white Angora rabbit, and he's like, yeah, Fluff or Another, you're the only one I care about. The rest of y'all motherfuckers can eat shit and die for all I care about. And I know if any you try I can imagine his voice. I can just imagine his voice. Straight off the boat. And that fucking cat, that, that, that cat, that fucking rabbit survived. And he was the sweetest fucking rabbit ever. And when all my parents split up, my mom took the cat, uh, the rabbits out the U-Haul truck and all that shit. And I remember going to my grandma's house at one time. And I was like, is there any left? She's like, yeah. Uh, and... <laughs> Fluff and Nutter and, and one of the rabbits was Andy. Fluff and Nutter and Andy were the only ones oh on the left in the back of the yard. And <laughs> my poor grandmother, I'm sorry that you had to deal with that through your daughter. And, and I'm sorry you're talking about this, but I'm sure you'll never see this. But you're but, sorry that your grandmother had to deal with your daughter's husband? No, she had, she had to deal with the rabbits in her. She had to, <laughs> there was a hundred rabbits thrown in the backyard out of nowhere because it was her daughter. Can you imagine like my son? Okay, my son Bertie. I love my son Bertie to death. And my next son coming on Beckham. But if anything came down to where, like, he had a hoarding problem with rabbits, do you think I would turn him <laughs> down? No, he's my son. I love him. I'll do anything for him. And that's what she did for Yo, him. what if he, like, ordered wildflowers? And that was the well, that would be a lot fucking easier than fucking living in individuals. Yeah, but I'm talking thousands of pots of wildflowers to the same degree as rabbits. Then, yeah, they'd be fine with me because they don't fucking <laughs> chew up fucking flowers themselves and very little, very little... Right, Lay little, little Ray, little fucking raisins. Tell it's a rabbit, 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 I call them raisins, dude. California fucking raisins over the place. I, I, I'm sorry, we're even getting caught up on the subject of rabbits. I know that's a little bit goofy. Not everybody grew up with a rabbit in their house, but my, my mom was always an animal sympathizer. And back it was a long time ago, I was a young kid when she lived in this house. Um, we have a TJ was talking about his family rabbits. We have a family of rabbits that used to live under our deck, but now they live under our shed on the other side of the yard. And when they did. But back when I was a kid and my mom lived here, there was a big mother rabbit and she had a bunch of babies. And one day we saw through the back door, a hawk came down out of the sky and tried to pick up the mother rabbit. But the mother rabbit was so <laughs> fucking fat that the hawk couldn't fly away with it. So the hawk, he's a genius predator, he said, I'm going to strangle and choke this fucking rabbit till it dies. And then I'm going to fly away with it because it'll be dead. It can't struggle anymore. It'll be way easier to catch. So this hawk comes down on this rabbit, and he's just nonchalantly <laughs> sitting on the rabbit like this. And he's acting like nothing's going on. Underneath him, he's fucking killing the rabbit. He's struggling to death, no big deal. My mom sees it, and she understands what's going on. She grabs a hockey stick from here in the living room, and runs out into the backyard, and swings this hockey stick at this hawk. This hawk freaks the fuck out. It takes off in the sky, brings the rabbit with it, probably about, I watched it happen when I do, with my own fucking oculus, whatever you call them. Uh, peripheral vision. Yeah, my o <laughs> whatever. My <laughs> ocular holes. My asshole. <laughs> the fucking hawk took off with his rabbit about 20 feet in the air, but the rabbit, who was still alive, struggled so much it got 20 feet up, the hawk had to let it go. This mother rabbit went, hit the ground, boom, took off, went right under the fucking shed. Like, I couldn't believe that it survived that long, but now as an adult, I understand that all rodents have something called a collapsible, collapsible skeletal structure. So their bones can just fucking... F I can't believe that rabbit survived from higher than my house. The hawk was higher than my two-story house when it dropped this rabbit. So. Is that rabbit alive? <laughs> Probably. How long do rabbits live? I'll tell you. You know? I think it's like 10, 12... It's like normally like 10, 12 years. Like the then it's, to... it's possible, but it's uh, unlikely. Uh, <laughs> the rabbits that we have here in the backyard now are probably her descendants. Hey, hey. What happened to us talking about aliens? All right, go into it. You kick it off. I've been talking for way no, too long. we got to cut this quick. Though. All right, but I just want to say this one thing. The more I look at society today, and anything all nuts, but in dad, terms of... Dad, come on. Dad? Chaplain or, Gene. Or dad. Dad, dad cha I was calling you Chaplain Gene. I thought you were going to talk about society, uh, no, I just spectator say, society. I just want to say, like, the more you look at, like, society today, and, like, I'm a big science nerd and all of the crap, astronomy, and I'm obsessed with it. Much of you guys don't know that I am. 
But you look up at the stars and you look at us and it's like people like people that just think their lives are so important and that's what drives me nuts. It's like, well I'm gonna do this today, I'm gonna make this company a million dollars. Well good for you with that monopoly money, because your money is as useful as monopoly money. You're like this little baby little speck. I shoot loads bigger than your <laughs> what's important to you. And I don't know, it's just something that's always bothered me. But like, for example, when we if you look back like we talked about Christopher Columbus and he discovered the ocean blue and we learned that as kids and that sucks that we learned that because it's not true at all. He was not the first one to discover America. The Vikings discovered America way before him. And we're still taught to this day. My little cousin showed me a book. I was like, no, that's all fake crap. That's all shit. And the more we learn, we exchange information throughout the AS and not saying what's true or not because we weren't there. So Christopher Columbus or the Vikings discovering, we don't know because we weren't fucking there. So if a video camera isn't rolling or if you can actually prove that, I don't want to hear who did that or who discovered it first. Yeah, do you trust every Facebook status up, update you read or every article you see posted to social media? Do you trust all those? What makes you think that you can trust somebody who wrote something 10,000 years ago? Well, that's a problem with, with uh, social media today, just like some library <coughs> books where it's like nonfiction or fiction. It's like, that was a thing when I was in like second or third grade and our teacher would be like, this is nonfiction. But I'm like, actually some of it's kind of truthful. Like, well, how do you know that? I was like, how do you know it's not true? I was like, and in my old teacher, she had like fucking lipstick on her teeth and she's like, hey, it's not real. Yeah. Uh, dude, like, don't follow her thing. Like, just like suspect your basic judgment of things. And it, it's really hard to get into this subject today, especially at the rate we're exchanging information. And I hope a lot of you guys realize that, that we are exchanging information at a rapid rate. Like, <sighs> Uh, we talked about it earlier, the, the rate is that every year, like, once 2016 is over, if we take a toll of all the information that was uploaded to the internet in 2016 and recorded, it will be more information than every year previous to 2016 combined. Ever since we started writing shit down on fucking paper, bro. Combined. And that's how quickly it's moving, we're on a curve. And, well, I guess it's an upward curve, we consider upward. And the further we go, the more infinite, it's infinite. It becomes fucking infinite. So, like, uh, we got... Well, that, that's the thing. It's like, yeah. people don't understand that. But I, the I think, increase. The I think increase a lot of our youth, infinite. though, I think a lot of our youth, though, today <laughs> actually understands that. But they don't understand it, but they do at the same time. They're not so. dumb. They see the world yes. differently than people 20 years ago did. Uh, and like, our parents, they're more adapted our parents do not understand that. Like, they do not. My uncles and my grandparents don't understand it. Because, like, it's a completely different world they live in. Yeah, you young cunts. I mean, you're not, you are dumb. I'm saying you're not dumb, but you are dumb. Fuck you. I'm a little bit older than you. I have superiority. I know more than you, and I'm going to treat you that way. But you're not dumb. I know you're not dumb. You're adapted to a world that, you know, the generation before me didn't understand. I kind of understand it, and it's been ingrained in you. So, oh, I don't even want to know what my kids are going to turn out to be like. It's going to be so weird and different. All I, mean, all I got to say is, as we end this, is like, if you look out inside the world, out today, take the, the best way to explain this is like, a lot of us don't appreciate what we have above us. We live in this like, like simple suburban area where it's like the, the lights from the city are like reflecting in our faces constantly. It's like if you walk out back and you look up to the stars, and that was one of the one things where I grew up out, I grew up right outside of Philadelphia, and we cannot look up to the stars. And as I come here, and even it's only like 30 minutes away, but I look up and I'm like, wow, like the sky is so beautiful. And it's like, this is amazing. And if anybody thinks that, that we are the only people around here and we're only, only living individuals outside the universe, it's like, you really got to sit there and check your perspective on life. And I had this one guy before, one of my close friends, he said, they would have discovered the aliens already. And they're like, oh, Jesus, I just want to walk my head into a wall and jump off a cliff. Because that's the way people are raised today. Society like raises us to understand it's like a simple world out there, but it's not. It's not. There's a big, big world out there. And the sky is the most beautiful part in the world. And if I could sit here all night and just stare up at that and just look at that, that that is the most beautiful thing in the world to me. The stars are fucking amazing <coughs> to me. Dog, are you trying to get some pussy right now or something? Nah, I've had plenty of pussy. I had a baby and I had a baby on the way.
No, I know. It's like crazy. Like I just, I know. It's just the way I think about it, man. I, it drives me nuts because like people think that it's like we live in this little small world today, and it drives me nuts. It's like, did you watch? All right, did you ever watch? What is the? We grew up into like the Dr. Seuss books, like the Cat yeah. Hat books, and uh, I follow. Horton Hears a Who, for example. I've seen the movie. And I show my son the movie, and it's just like, man, it's like, God, it's like, he knew it back then. It's like, and people back then, we all <laughs> knew it. It's like, why did they continually know it throughout the years? Oh, yeah. What? It just connected. Horton Hears a, Ho Horton Hears a Who is, is a story Horton of... Horton Hears a domestic violence behind the wall. Fucking mom and dad fighting behind the wall, but it's, we still hear a Who. Your, connect, your connection is Horton Hears a Who is the story of a microcosm. Yes, right? and that's what it is. Yeah, okay. I follow now. I mean, I'm not saying that's what it is, but I'm just so saying that's, assume to, just to think that we're just like... That we can perceive everything that's happening. Humanity right. thinks we're this big wig thing. Like, people wake up every day and it's like, let me go to work and like jerk off and like fucking do this. Your life sucks. Go out and party, yeah. enjoy your friends and your company, and the more you do that, the more unlikely society's probably going to get more fucked up. But I'm just saying, like, the, the people that actually enjoy those situations <coughs> are the ones that really know where it's at. And that, that's what I want to say. The majority of us who rebel against that structure, though, we are fucking, we end up being bottom feeders, bro. And not enjoying some of the successes that those fucking robots can have. And they, like, fit in. Like, be a bottom feeder. That sucks. You want to do that? But, like, it requires I, some self esteem, though. It requires some self esteem to keep pushing. You really got to be like, I feel okay about myself, regardless of all the negative shit around me, I'm just gonna keep pushing through it, you know? Well, if they wanna fall in line, more power to you guys. You guys fall in line and enjoy your 9 to 5, or even not 9 to 5, just like, I'm gonna do this today because I have to do it. No, you're not gonna make any music content, you're not gonna express yourself, like, uh, physically or verbally or anything, you're just gonna struggle day by day and make this fake money that we all consider money. Money is make-believe. The more you forget about money, the more better off you are in the world. Money is a big make-believe thing. We all need it to get by, but okay, they just just keep making it, but like... Uh, uh, you, can, you can see it on the wall, soulone.org. Money is a hologram. It's made of paper and that shit don't burn. Falling in line, the system, and that's it. And I, I'm going to say this all the time, and I try to get my girl to understand it all the time. And I'm going to teach my kids this way, but I'm, I'm going to say, like, there is a point where you, you need to fall in line to keep society going, but you don't need to do it to a certain point, to the point where it's affecting your life, where it makes you upset, and it ruins your life. And I've lost many friends to drugs and suicide and other shit, and I don't want to see that ever again. You need to enjoy your life the way you want to do it. Don't do what other people want you to do. And the more we continue to fall in line with this crap, that's the way it's going to be. I, uh, I co-opt this message. Yeah, fuck what they want you to do. Because uh, I've been... Dude, I've been against that system since I decided that I wasn't good at school. And the whole world was against me. Well, that's the one thing my father taught me as a kid as we, like, cut this off. Because he did teach me that. He said, don't ever fall in line. And, like, and I didn't. And he hated that I wasn't getting in line at the same time because... Dude, they tell you from the time you're a little kid, my, my five-year-old comes home and tells me shit that her teacher told her at school that is theoretical, not facts. It's just something that her teacher feels or believes about the world we live in or about life. And I say, well, um, uh, don't, don't trust your teachers because they don't have anything figured out more than you. And she'll be like, nah, -uh. my, teacher does. my teacher knows, she told me. And that's and, uh, completely true. Like, because they I don't feel like a cunt for saying that to my five-year-old. No, nothing I, wrong. Yeah, I tell her. Nothing wrong. Yeah. We're, here, we're here to learn and teach other people to, you know, enjoy other people's company. Like, for example, me and him meeting each other. Now, for example, like, if I was, like, to judge him the way, like, society was, and if he was judging me, like, we both are broke as balls. We yeah, what if you looked at me and you're like, oh, my God, this guy works here at this establishment? What but a that, fucking loser. That's the way, like, society teaches you today. It's like, oh, <laughs> you have no money or anything? Well, you have no money? I can't be a part of your life. Get the fuck out of here, like. And that's what they teach people today, and that, that's a sad thing to like deal with, and I will never let my kids go through that. I'd rather be out there, and I, I watch some people that, that are musicians, they live out in Hawaii and other areas, and they're like using water filter systems, they're sitting out in the middle of nowhere, and they're enjoying the company jobs, and they get to like barely work, and their hours are them cleaning their water filter system and doing a shit maybe like four or five hours a week. <laughs> and then the rest of them enjoying each other's company on the beach with Dang. their kids and their family and having fucking fun playing music. And that's where the life is at. And I'm going to just walk up and cut this fucking goddamn thing off. Yeah, that's what we do. All we're doing is having fun. Uh, nobody approves of what we're doing right now. We just fucking do it. Nah, man.
man. This this fucking pony right here, man. Just pet it. Just pet it. And just fucking just understand Peace where it's at. Peace and just, the fuck out. You won't come kiss this pony. I'll drink the rest of your beer that don't exist. Yeah, wait, wait, where you at? Come piss, kiss this pony. Kiss this pony. My brazil. A ducky, ducky, ducky. Stop. Don't touch me here. What? Oh, you want it in the air, Alright, we got Now, you see, as stupid as that was, that was very important. It was a positive message. A suppository message? But no, all right, but serious, all this, this stupid stuff we just said, though, but on a serious note, just be yourself, enjoy your life, and don't fall in line. That's all I want to say. Oh, no, we're fucking stupid. No, don't try and fucking... Just take a, take a pony. No, don't try no and I want to say just seriously, just people today, it's like everybody falls in line, and I can't stand that. And, like, my even my own girl falls in line, and it just drives me insane. I don't want to be a part of this life anymore. I want us to, like, disappear to, like, some other continent and, like, just find a lifestyle we want. Like, I want to work and contribute to society, but I don't want to contribute to society where it's like <coughs> the society we live yeah, in today. Yeah. yeah, fuck your life. If you're listening to this, if you're a real motherfucker, go outside, light your car on fire, burn all your clothes, <laughs> leave your girlfriend. You don't need this. Go live in the woods. You can live in the woods naked and survive. Yes. Fuck society. I'll and, be here with my microphones down. And eat cat litter and acorns. Alright, Ray's taking me home. As you can see, he likes to smoke a lot of Marlboro Red. Pretty black fishy cat convinced me that it would be alright. Then claw my face off, so I won't have to wash it tonight. Alright, we're back at our place. We just watched the video we filmed. Our place? Yeah, our place. Man, like butt sex. Your place, buddy. Bend over. <coughs> just take it. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Good, good didn't you? <laughs> It's, okay. it's your place. We're back at TJ's place. No, but as we watch it, though, I know I said a lot of, of like ridiculous things, but the simple note is just like, you know, the thing is like go through life and enjoying yourself and not trying to fall into that system that everybody like pushes it towards. And I know we have to at times. And for example, what he went through when he was talking about the gorilla video with his father today. And a lot of those zookeepers, I guarantee you them, they were completely against what went on today. But like, you know what? They still sat there. And kept their mouth shut because they didn't want to lose their job because they need money to get by and the money that we need to get by is what we all go through every day and we'll leave it as simple as that i mean i don't know what else to say i mean that, that's what we go through every time that wraps it up nicely peace peace south jersey greece The birds are chirping and shit. Every time. Every, every time. time. He's not shutting the camera off. But dude, because every time we hang out, the sun starts coming up. Yeah, he stayed sober. Tonight. Well, he actually. Had, like, I stayed mostly. Yeah, he, drank yeah, a little bit towards the end. Like but two, I stayed mostly sober. He had like sober two beers. Because like. I bought. T I had to bring TJ back to my house. I wanted to bring him home, so I just drank a little bit at my house, barely any, and I drove him home. You no, know I drink because society sucks. It's not a problem. <laughs> it's not a problem unless you admit it. I have a problem. Dancing now. Well, when you go, I'm going swimming for a moment. Because Rebecca's going to come down any minute now. Go swimming. I got to go. I'm, I'm going to go start editing this uh, this vlog, this podcast style vlog we did. Because I'm staying up now. I got to get my kids to school in the morning. I'm staying awake. So you want editing. that exclusive between me and Ray Talk and what we just watch? Ray Ray Beats. YouTube.com. Backslash Ray Ray Beats. Can't get any simpler than that. If not, Thanks, you can, bud. you'll see me hit the like and the favorite and comment and all, and all that stuff. You always do. Yeah, I mean, because, like, you know, we're simple people and there's a bat out there. Something's flapping. Something like. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, please go ahead out. Much love. I love you, brother. And what else you want to say before we go? Uh, everybody be safe, be kind. Uh, try to think the best of people. Even when you think the worst. Treat others like the way you want to be treated. And that's like a fucking king, cuz. It's the way to go through life, man. Much love, guys. Take care. TJ's about to jump into the pool. This is hardcore. More hardcore than you've seen. I don't even know how it, like, left off. I'm going swimming.
I'm trying to figure out how to put my hooves on. My girl's gonna wake up any minute now. Like, Alright, what I need you to do is just go back there and get that corner shot. Cause I'm Break the pool. I gotta jump on the ladder. Oh, fuck the ladder. Yeah, if I just jump, I'm gonna hurt myself and break the pool. I can't <laughs> see out the fucking mess, God damn it. See, I wanna just run and jump, but I don't think I'll make it. Alien. <laughs> I wonder if it's going. It's an alien. It's an alien. It's an alien. I can't get it off my fucking head. God damn it, Ray. Ah, oh, it sucks when you on my fucking head. I can't see you. Are you recording me? You fucking asshole. Ah! <laughs> Man, I wanted to jump it, but I don't want to the pool. I don't want to run my kid's summer. It's the summer of 69. Dude. <laughs> it's the summer of 69. God damn it. Uh, choking me, right? <laughs> Alright, I tried to do that, but I didn't want to break the pool. Ray's way more athletic than I am. So he's gonna wait. No, no, not yet, Ray. All right, there's that unicorn. He just wants to swim in the pool. All right, go ahead, buddy. You do your thing. He's thinking the same thing. We have no depth perception of doing that, and I probably could have did this, but I'm too fat. Yes, yeah. See, you nailed it, though. I could have done it with the mask. Oh, you gotta do it again, then. All right. <laughs> I'm not jumping now, I'm running up to it. You warm up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I don't like your kind here. You goddamn unicorns keep coming into our country. You think it's okay to just come out here and just get jobs and, you know, like take care of your, your, your little baby unicorns? It's not okay. Who are you rooting for, unicorn? Donald Trump? Hillary Clinton. They both nasty as fuck. Pussy all the way. You're more thirsty than that unicorn. You should put your whole head in there. Yeah, hey, drink up, unicorn. <laughs> Alright, so as we call it a night, you know, we reviewed the vlogs tonight. You know, it wasn't quite like a unicorn drinking from the pool. But we had our opinions and everything was great. And he's going to share this on his channel, Ray Ray Beats. God, he's so thirsty. And he, like, really... <laughs> And I can't even take this serious, but I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's content, whether it's on my channel or his channel. And stop splashing, you stupid whore. Yeah, look at that. I'm gonna stroke that horn. Yeah, it's a big old floppy, floppy, floppy. There you go. <coughs> yeah, it's got that. No, I'm trying to stroke it, you asshole. Oh. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hey, I'm not done. Hey, stay there. <coughs> yeah, I got this. Yeah, no, no, I missed. I got your ear. Oh, loads. Good night.
Okay, Ray. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, Ray. Bye bye, my hooves. My hooves. <laughs> Gay smokes. Alright, so Ray just left my house now. Um, it's like 6 now. <clears throat> it's very foggy outside. So, as you can see, foggy. Um, my cats are over here. <laughs> it's like actually really funny. Look at these guys. Look. Kitty softballs. Captain Creature, they're just waiting. What are you gonna do? Let's just like open the door and see what they do. Let's see what they do. Watch, watch the little run. Oh, there's open! Mm, okay, no, can't come out here. In the past, I've actually let Captain Creature out here, the black and white fluffy one. And actually, Kitty Softball is the black one, but. <laughs> She's all talk. I let her out and she ran in back in when I shut the door the one the one day the other day actually like two days ago when I wasn't blocking But we're gonna call it a night um, Either way whatever me and Ray recorded tonight. It's gonna be on his channel or my channel It wasn't like anything crazy, but it was like cool just for us to sit down like talk talk talking, you know talking but uh, honestly, what he recorded with his father, it was like memorable. That, that's really cool shit that him and his dad are doing that. And we, we talked about that. And it was cool that I guess I had a part of that of him actually influencing him to do that. And I hope he continues to make those, those videos of him and his father. Because I think him and his dad have something there. And his, his dad's like a natural on video, dude. Like he just knows how to be on camera. He had a radio show in the past. Like he just knows. So he showed me stuff he hasn't shown yet, and I hope he shares it all with you guys. But uh, other than that, I'm going to call this a quit. Brody's going to be up within like, God, he's going to probably be up in like a half an hour. It's 6 now, so 6.30. He'll be up. Greg is at work. But much love, guys. Thank you for watching my juvenile ignorance, and take care. Yay. Yeah, 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 bub. Yeah. Oh. I am jumping back in that pool though, by the way. I am. Before I go to bed, I'm just going to jump in the pool. Yeah. Yeah.